usually when I work with people, I have um, a couple goals. One is to, well, the first goal right away always is to, what's a playbook? So I lay out a playbook. So goal one, whenever working with somebody, goal is to make a playbook. Make a playbook. Well, that's so abstract. What the hell is it? A playbook. Well, the second goal is to um, get some workflow documents, workflow docs down, workflow docs. Um, another goal is to get the guy, the workflow gets some trading and is constant follow-up. Constant follow-up because you have to have this or else you won't go any place and it takes a while to get this information all together and collated you have to slowly work through it and think about it so first off there are four parts to your playbook there's four major section plays and models models are multiple plays um, a section for topics um, a workflow document usually these are videos on where to click research and development and the book usually has 30 40 tabs um, tab one would be an overview we might do this. Tab one is an overview. Um, tab one is a overview, an overview of the market. Tab two would be plays. Um, tab the second set would be tabs by topic, by topic, and um, they're laid out inside here. And you can break these down. Some people break them up by patterns, instruments, other ways. I just lay them out by topics down here. And the last one is R and D. R&D and the workflow is usually videos all right we already know what the 12 T's are we're gonna skip them there but they're they're re-articulated in here tonight I want to give you a little lecture and whenever you put one of these in the in the slot in your playbook the slot goes under trade management okay so I'm gonna define this is a trade management topic trade management okay management topic this will go into this part of your playbook our learning objectives I want to define some terms on sizing this is it Okay, um, I want to I want to do this. So um, our money management profile is something we say it is. How can I change variables to make a system profitable? Well, I can change lots, risk, targets, stop. I can hedge from outside of the country or B is streaks. So first off, let's define something that pops up in my EAs: pip sizing or risk sizing. We say I will risk twenty pips, and I said if I lose. Um, I increase the size of the position to 1.5, okay? 20 pips equals the um, distance to stop, and the 1.5 would be this. What I do is I take the size of the position, the size of the position, and times it by 1.5, but I do not change, I do not change, I do not change the stop, okay? now. Risk sizing is also, there's another term for it. It's called volatility sizing. Risk sizing slash HV sizing. HV sizing. I take the distance to stop, the entry minus the exit, times 10. This converts, this converts pips to standard lots. Converts pips to standard lots. To standard lots. Now, I take the account size at risk, and I take 100,000, um, or 10,000 times 0.01 equals $100 risk. I take the account at risk, divide it by the pips um, at one standard lot. Okay, this will equal the percent of a standard lot I want to buy. Percent of standard lot. Standard lot I want to buy. Well, what this does is if I lose, I increase the risk by two. But the, So the stop becomes variable. In this one, the biggest difference is I still lose the same amount. Stops are variable. Are variable. Okay. Now, um, what types of sizing are there? Well, there's pip size, wrist size. There is um, streaks. Now, underneath streaks, we have what's called distributing sizing. Losses over average win. If I win 400 times, I lose one. I send the losses over 400 trades. Increasing, increasing, I increase T, which would be target, or L, which would be lots, or R, which would be risk. I would increase one of these variables, or a portion of each one. Predictive sizing is, a, it, it increases both wins, or it doesn't matter which whether I win or lose. Distributive sizing focuses on the win cycles. Um, predictive sizing focuses on both what will be the next trade, and it just goes wherever they predict it. Regressive sizing is where you take um, the loss, um, or the win. So I started a high size. I started a high lot size or a risk size, 
or a risk size based on the win or loss list size and I drop into an average win expecting the loss to, to um, come next or vice versa so what I'm doing is example I start at one lot I win I just start at one lot then I go to 0.5 lots then I go to 0.25 lots and then I go to point whatever down to zero because I'm predicting um, a loss to come in the data I decrease my sizing this is regressive incremental sizing works like this I can do the th same thing. I increase it then. I say, oh, loss A, loss A, a win is coming. So now I increase the size. I increase the size. Okay, this is called martingaling. It, and it's really not martingaling. It's incremental sizing. Okay, the loss is increased. Now, there's a combination of these that I could take, which would involve hedging. Um, well, there's a combination. Let's, let's do the combination first. I could do on the wins on the wins I can I can increase the um, or increment I, I can do regressive sizing on the wins I can do regressive sizing on the wins on the wins so I win every time I win I drop the size and on loss and on loss I do um, uh, predict or I do incremental sizing okay so that would be a combination now there's one I use, it's called hedging, and it's really the Johnny Cash method. Johnny Cash works like this. It's one pip at a time, and I'll make this mine. So what I do is I take in here, and I look at this, and I say, here's my D zone indicator. This is the 80% um, of the time it goes into this range, and 80% of the time it'll stay in this range. As I go into one of these ranges, as I approach the top of the range, um, I slowly sell off. This is an advantage in Forex. I slowly sell off. I exit part. So what I would do is I am getting closer to um, the predicted turning point, predicted turning point, predicted turning point, turning point. I sell part. I sell part. Bourbon does this. Bourbon does this type of sign. Um, a money management system it, it it just decreases because we're there's a higher and higher probability loss decrease size decrease size okay so it, it decreases the size of the position so what what style did I use these aren't just lots on losses this is important these sizing mechanisms I'm gonna put a little side note in here the 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 sizing methods the sizing methods do not I do not mean to infer the sizing methods I do not mean to infer they are just on entry they are just on entry they are just on entry you don't want to do this what you want to do they are on exit also now what we do is we just decrease size so this one was a regressive sizing method all right if you want to get right into it it's a regressive sizing method that's what it's been doing okay that's what bourbon does now if I take and it starts to to run my way like that I don't have to bourbon uses really some fixed amounts it uses like 50 percent of the position 80 percent of the position at certain lots the Johnny Cash method up here you can do this um, this is like one pip at a time I'll make that mine what they do is the higher and higher you go, you, your, your lot size, lot size is one, and you sell or hedge, you sell or hedge, you sell or hedge 0.01. So you're going to sell a small, small amount. This is the Johnny Cash one. That's what I call it because it always reminded me of that, um, that um, movie, okay? Um, you know, the Johnny Cash one. Now, um this is the most important thing about it okay you cannot be successful until you tackle this none of your systems can so this is homework read this sizing there's some books in here by Jan Tharp Jan Tharp on sizing Jan Tharp on sizing okay there's some really interesting stuff so this would just give you a flavor this goes right into a certain section of our playbook we build a playbook well this particular one we did tonight would go into one of the tabs by topics so right now under topic we got a lecture on what types of sizing are there what types of sizing 
Okay, so we could put this also under, um, you could classify this in both places, all right? Um, I could come down here and I could say this is a trade management topic and trade size, the interrelationships of this. Um, I would love to put together a website that lets me cross references these topics. I could type the topics in and somebody could bring them up because a hard copy, you can't do that. Now we could have one lecture and we could cross reference it. <clears throat> and then this would get you a bunch of information about this because these are topics in your playbook and we're, we're really building out topics to support a play that's coming down the path. So hopefully that's clear.